Hey guys, so I want to do a video today about the new consoles, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X. I'm very excited for both. I'm a gamer myself and I'm really looking forward to these consoles. So let's uh, let's get straight to it and start discussing about them. And so the first thing, let's talk about the, the design of both of them. So you've got the PlayStation 5 and I think a beautiful, gorgeous looking white and black design. Then you've got the very box column shape of the Xbox Series X. So let's start with my favourite one first, which is the PlayStation 5. I think that is a really, really pretty console. I think it's very swish, very modern. You can tell it's, it, yes, it's massive. And there's so much talk about how big it is. Why is it so big? These consoles are so powerful now, they need to be cooled. And if the only way to cool that console in the, in the form factor they want is to be that big, then I'm all for it. I, I love the idea of having this massive beast of a console. So I personally love the, the look of the PS5. I think the, the white is a great move away from the traditional black and blue of it. I love the white and black contrasting look. I like the hint. I think there's a I think there's a hint of blue light on there somewhere. So yeah, I'm I'm a big, big fan of the PS5 and how it looks. And I think it just looks like a stunning console, to be honest. I think it's one of the best looking consoles since maybe like the, the PS3 that they made and quickly moved away from with the Spider-Man font. And then the other side of the fence, you've got the Xbox Series X, which is a very, it's very boring, to be honest. I think while it, it can look cool in its own right, in its own design way of being this big, black, sort of mysterious looking sort of monolith column thing, I think it looks great stood up vertical, but I think having it lying down, mm -mm. there's just like no shape to it. There's no like creases. There's no, there's no slices in it. There's no uh, little flary bits here and there. It's very much just a, when you look at it front on, especially it's lying down, it's just a, a flat black side. It, it doesn't do much for me, but when it's stood up and you have that green flare of, of, of color coming through from that green plastic on top and it's in this big tall form factor I think it looks really good and saying that I think they both suit best when they're up vertically uh, the PS5 looks better lying down I think than the Xbox Series X does but when they're both vertical I think when they've got space around them and they're not crammed into little space I think they're going to look really really good I think they look really great to show off look really part of your like your TV unit and stuff uh, and I think they're going to look Really, really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a PS5 win for me. Now moving on from the design, uh, not going to talk too much about the tech specs of them both. They're both very similar. They're both running an AMD um, sort of, you know, chip in them. Um, I believe I'm right in saying the PS5 has a higher clock rate when it comes to the graphics side of it um, than the Xbox Series X. And the Series X, I believe, runs its CPU at a fixed highest frequency or clock rate, whereas the PS5, I think, is a variable clock rate. Now, bear in mind, I, like I said, I'm not an expert on this, but I'm I'm wondering if maybe it means the, the Xbox Series X is going to be able to hit that 60 frames per second easier and 120 frames per second easier in games than the PS5, maybe. But at the same time, because the PS5 has such a higher clock rate when it comes to the graphics side of things, I'm wondering if the PS5, when comparing game to game between the two consoles, if it's going to be able to offer a bit more graphical fidelity. You know, what I mean by that is like, you know, will the, you know, the PS5 be able to hit, you know, a native 4K easier and for a longer period of time compared to an Xbox Series X doing dynamic resolution? Um, and will it be able to do more things like ray tracing or better anti-aliasing or better shadows, better ambient occlusion? I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud again. But, you know, it, it's a high clock rate. It is a really high clock rate. When you compare the, the 2 point whatever it's gigahertz or the PS5 console to the clock rate of some of these high-end GPUs like the RTX 2080 and the RTX even like the 3080, obviously, even more so, you know, two point two gigahertz, which I I, pres I would presume equate to twenty, you know, equates to two thousand two hundred megahertz on a on a PC GPU. I don't know. That's high. It, that's a really high clock rate when, when you compare it to the Xbox Series X's, which is I think quite a lot lower, maybe one thousand eight hundred. But saying that, like we always say with these consoles, it's never always down to what's written on paper. 
it's or you know what the tech specs are it's down to how they utilize that hardware how the game developers take that hardware and use it on the consoles you know it's down to the exclusives so while you can compare them and they can do their advertisements about saying oh this is the most powerful console in the world sometimes you need to look past the tech specs and look at the actual experience and so when it comes to comparing the xbox series x and ps5 for their tech specs i'm not going to i think they're both going to have their pros and cons they're both very different yet very similar at the same time so i suppose the next thing to talk about and we're just talking about experience of the of the two consoles is the user interface or the ui and the menu system xbox series x has gone for a system which is very similar if not pretty much identical to the current xbox one console generation and while i like that i like the fact that i can pick it up on you know day one or christmas or whatever i can get it and i can turn it on and i know where i am with stuff i know how, how to work way around it for me yes that's great and it's going to be easy to work around and, and get to grips with straight away but for me about when it comes to buying a new console new generation some of the excitement comes in you know getting that new console and exploring this new heart, this new software that they've got for you. And so while that's Xbox's target or goal is to have a smooth transition for people, the other side of the fence is PlayStation, who have gone for a completely different thing, which is where it's still similar in some ways to the current PS4 user interface or UI menu system. They have modernized it and they've gone for a, a, a different take on it they want to advance it forward to what it currently is and so i personally prefer the playstation uh sort of choice it's what we're used to but just modernized and adding extra features so today they released a video showing off the new playstation user experience user experience as they call it and i highly recommend you go watch it because i can't explain everything that's covered but there's some great new features in this it feels more streamlined it feels more the game and the, the software feels like they're working hand in hand as opposed, as opposed on top of each other. You know, they've added the feature where uh, you can have your friend's uh, live gameplay streamed picture in picture while you're playing your own game of full screen. What a great idea, you know, and you can be in a party chat, chatting and they may say, oh, look at this bit or how do I get past this boss? And you can just play your own game, look down to the bottom right corner or bottom left, or wherever you put the screen and you can watch their gameplay. I mean, that's really utilizing the power of these consoles and making use of a new software and new UI. I think that's great. And just other things like they've made these things called cards, which pop up when you press the PlayStation button. It comes up with things like your recently captured um, screenshots, any trophies you can track, how to do these things called activities, your progress, uh, what are the people are doing. Just just little like little news feeds and little things you can quickly click on and quickly get to, nice instant uh, and. And they're even allowing game developers, if they want to make use of this, the ability to sort of build into the game, uh, like help and walkthrough guides when you get stuck. So rather than Googling for a, a walkthrough on some level you're stuck on and coming across from a spoiler, which ruins the game, or watching a YouTube video to help you to do it and you go too far forward and you spoil the game, they can allow the developers to build in their own hints and, and walkthroughs in the game that you can get to. So do go and check out that new PlayStation user experience video on YouTube. It's about 11 minutes long. Definitely worth watching. Gives you real insight into PlayStation 5's um, user interface. Obviously, some features on the Xbox Series X are great. You know, you've got smart delivery. Obviously, you've got that similar on the PlayStation 5, but smart delivery. You've got backwards compatibility with the Xbox One games, Xbox 360. You need to be even the original Xbox games as well that's on there digitally, maybe even via disc. And, you know, they've got the uh, backwards compatibility sort of game boost mode where you, it, it uh, boosts up your frame rate. Some of these games, if they're not, if they're not capped at 30 FPS, for example, letting you hit 60 FPS. And there's a lot of obviously YouTubers that have already shown that stuff. So do go and look for that online. The Xbox Series X sounds really powerful and it sounds like it's going to be fantastic for your old or current game collection still going forward. You know, Red Dead Redemption 2 loading super quick, for example. So yeah, I think these consoles both have a great software for both of them. Um, I, obviously, these the exclusive the PlayStation Five are going to be fantastic when they come out much sooner than we get the place the Xbox Series X exclusives. 
Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what both of these consoles can do. Um, I've, I hope I've managed to actually pre-order a Series X, so I'm looking forward to coming through. Haven't been able to pre-order a PS5. Maybe I could get one of those in the future when they come down in price maybe a little bit. But yeah, my final thoughts, my opinions. Um, I'm more excited for the PlayStation 5 just because I love the look of it. I love the user interface for it. And I love the fact we're getting exclusives right away. And I'm just looking forward to seeing what they can do with that technology. Um, and I, I just, I'm very excited for it because I, I love the exclusive and PlayStation. At the same time, I'm also excited not as much but i'm still really 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 excited for my series x well actually I, I, i'm i'm really pumped to be honest for my series x um i i obviously would love to have both consoles only able to pre-order a series x but i'm super excited for it i can't wait to see what it can do for my current catalog of games i've got i can't wait to see what it does with these series x optimization for these games that are coming out i, I, I cannot wait to get it I, i'm like an excited kid i really am i can't wait to get it um, and uh, I'm waiting for the PS5. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one of those. I think a PlayStation 5 would be nice to wait. They do a bit cheaper with a really nice bundle with the headphones and some games and like the charging dock and the re media remote. I think that'd be quite nice to wait for till they come down in price and you get like a good old bundle. Nothing better than buying a bundle with your console. It really isn't. But um, that's it for now really guys. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this different kind of video. I'm enjoying making them. Hope you guys are too. Please like and comment. Bye bye.